All right, well, in this video, we're going to be looking at that first quiz that just covers lesson 6-1. So for this first problem, it's asking us to describe what's happening here with this graph. And so this graph here, we can see that we have a negative in front. So that's going to reflect the graph over the x-axis. Here we have an x minus 2. Remember, whatever happens directly with the x, we do the opposite, or we describe what's happening to the graph by doing the opposite of what happens with the x. So here we have x minus 2, so that means it's going to go to the right two units. And since we have a plus 3 here at the end, that affects the graph vertically. So this is going to go, and it's going to do exactly what we see here. So it's going to go up 3 units. So we just got to figure out what does this represent. Exponential growth, decay, or neither. And it's not going to be a linear function because we have a variable that's an exponent. So it's going to be one of these two. The fact that our growth factor, a value for b there, is between 0 and 1. Tell, I'm sorry, is bigger than 1, rather. Uh, that represents exponential growth. If it's between 0 and 1, it represents decay. All right, so here we have to figure out what um, distance they'll be traveling um, at the end of the year. Now, the key here is this uh, formula is referring to how far they travel each month. Uh, so the first month, they travel 5 miles, and each time he runs, he plans on increasing using this model. Uh, so, if, so how far he, uh, would he be getting at the end of the year? Well, there's 12 months in a year. So basically, all you would do is you would take 5 times 1.1, to the 12th power. And when you do that on your calculator, you end up getting 15.692, which we went around to the nearest tenth, so we'll just say 15.7. So make sure you know how to round correctly there. All right, so for this one in 2020, we have a, a new laptop is purchased for $1,300. It depreciates by one or by 8% each year. Okay, so we're we're using this model, our growth factor, value for B, we would have to, if it's depreciating by 8%, we're losing 8% every single year. So we would have 100% of the original value. If we lose 8%, 100 minus 8 would be 92%. So 92% is what's remaining. And as a decimal, that would be 0.92. The other way that you could do this is it changes to a decimal and then uh, subtract that from 1. So 8% as a decimal is 0 0.08, and 1 minus 0 0.08 is still 0.92. All right, so this one we're just, again, describing the graph here. So this would be an exponential function. So let's just sketch a graph of what this would look like. The fact that my value for b there, there my value for a is just 1. So since my value for b is 4, again, that's bigger than 1, so it means exponential growth rather than decay. So we can see then that the graph would have a domain going from negative infinity to infinity and a range going from 0 to infinity. The y-intercept is this point here which is always the coordinate 0, whatever a is. So a, again, is 1. It's not 4, so it would be the coordinate 0, 1. The asymptote, we have a horizontal line going through where y equals 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right, so this is referring to the left side of the graph. Okay, so this is not referring to the right side of the graph. This is referring to the left side of the graph. As x approaches negative infinity, so on the left side of the graph, we can see that the graph is getting closer and closer to 0 where this is referring to the right side of the graph. On the right side of the graph, we see the graph is going up towards infinity. And this was a typo there. That's not supposed to be in there. Um, that would be your answer for that one. All right. Uh, the function y equals 3 times 0.7 to the x power represents what? Growth, decay, or neither. Again, it's not linear. but It's going to be probably one of these two since our value for b, again, is between... 0 and 1, that means that it's exponential decay. All right, so this one we're just finding out again our values for A and B. So um, we know that the, in, pop, in 2020, the population of the town is 12,500, and it's increasing exponentially by 2% each year, which if you add that to 100%, you'd have 102%, which has a decimal is 1.02. Or we could change it to a decimal 0.02, Add it to 1, you get 1.02. That's another way to do the value for b. All right, last question. So this one here, we're looking at this graph. Again, they didn't ask you to graph it, but sometimes it's a little easier if you just sketch a graph. And I know that this is going to be exponential decay because my value for b there is 0.25. So that tells me that it's exponential decay. Uh, so the function has a domain still of negative infinity to infinity, and it has a range of 0 to infinity. That doesn't change unless we start moving it or translating it horizontally or vertically. Um, the y-intercept. The y-intercept is, 
Again, we use that value for 2 there is going to be our y-intercept, so it'll be the coordinate where x is 0, y is 2. The asymptote is still at y equals 0. That hasn't moved. And again, this is referring to the left side of the graph. The left side of the graph we can see is going up towards infinity. The right side of the graph we can see is getting closer and closer, 0. So that's how you do that. So hopefully that answers the questions you had. If you, just like normal, if you still have any other questions, please don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help.